What's up guys, Tiana Burr's Bar Talk and Coffee. The scenery has changed, but the message is still the same. Today we're talking about Gary Vee's new book, Crushing It, and we're talking about the successful launch that happened with SpaceX. Welcome to the new season of Bar Talk and Coffee. We're here, downtown Sacramento at Locasetcha. Our company space is right up the street. I love this place. Today we're gonna to talk about no risk and no reward. How does that play a huge factor in life and in business? Well, it does, and here's the reason why. For me, I've risked everything. I've been an entrepreneur for the last, going on 15 years, and I've had people believe in me because I've taken massive risk, and I've had people that haven't believed in me because I've taken risks that they didn't agree with. Get used to taking risk if you wanna live a fulfilled life. Guys, I'm telling you right now, there is moments of my life and there's gonna be moments in your life where you have to put it all on the line. And you don't know if what you're doing, the decisions that you're making, is gonna be good or bad for you, either present or long-term. The fact is that you'll never know until you actually try. Now, here's the caveat. Get, get used to losing, because when you're taking the amount of risk that it takes to be successful, you're going to encounter a lot more losses than you would encounter by not taking risk. And so I think the one thing that most people are completely afraid of is losing and failing and what their peers will think of them as they've taken this huge risk and then losing at the same time. There are things that I've done over the last 24 months that none of you guys have seen that A, hasn't worked and B, I've put it out publicly that it was gonna work and it didn't work. Now, where there's incredible risk, there is incredible reward. When you're risking something, you're banking on the fact that the vision you have for yourself, for yourself, and I'll say it again, for yourself, is going to come with an attachment of the vision that you have in your mind. Now, if you can see something in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. So although you may be taking certain risks that you may think are very risky, your family or friends or whoever may think it's very risky, the truth is that if it pans out the way that you think your crazy idea will, the reward of that is insane. It's life-changing. And here's a funny thing about that, is that the people who actually try to talk you out of your crazy idea, once it does work, because there's an attachment to it working, they're gonna be your biggest cheerleaders. The haters will always come in and cheer you on the, the sidelines. Oh, fucking way to, I knew I believed you, fucking way to go. Be very aware of the fact that once it's, it does work and you do have success, just as much as you're risking and comfortable with that risk that can be attached to failure, be as comfortable as you can with that success. Because the one thing that happens with a lot of people is that when they're successful and they risk it all, they start to do self-sabotage and they lose it all because they cannot handle it. So as you are attached to what you're starting and the consequences, good or bad of it, be just as attached to it working and do not sabotage your success because that is a real thing. So get used to it, get comfortable with saying, okay, you know what? This thing I thought wasn't gonna work that I risked my life for, or my business for, or my financial, or my time for, is actually working now. Be okay with success because that's the reason why you're taking the risk in the first place. Speaking of opinion, I have Gary V. Bay, his latest book in my hand, Crushing It. First of all, I love, love, love Gary. I love, love, love his very first book called uh, Crush It. And so this was this was a spinoff of the very first book he wrote. The very first book he wrote changed me because I had did a lot of things from a business standpoint and a brand standpoint very unknowingly. I didn't know that I was on the right path. And after picking up his book and reading it, it really changed the way I looked at what I was doing. I don't think I gave myself enough value, which I think in business and in life, we don't give ourselves enough credit for what we're doing. And I maybe devalued my what I was doing, my whole brand and what I was building because I didn't understand if I was on the right track. I didn't have a reference point. So reading um, his very first book made me realize that I was absolutely on the right track. I had everything I was doing was on the right path. I had everything I needed to succeed and it really changed the way I saw myself. I gave myself a lot more value, a lot more street cred. And so when he came out with this book, which was crushing it, I could not wait to get my hands on it. I've Literally, if you guys can see, I have some tabs here. I actually read it uh, within two days. I know it sounds crazy. You're probably thinking like, do you, have any, do you have enough time on your hands, T? In life and in business, it's very interesting because we always have opinions and criticism, critiques. For me, actually, now that I just think about this, I, I would want anyone 
to critique my textbook that's going to be in every CSU this year um, because I want to know if my shit is good. And just like I want to know if my shit is good, I know Gary wants to know if this is good. And I am very happy about this book. Here are my thoughts. A, I spent two days reading it. I read it all. It is very basic. In a good way, but very basic. It's very simplified on what you can do to build your brand and your company. This isn't for someone who's not gonna follow through. The examples that he shares in this book had built a brand the last 10 years. So you have to ask yourself, if I go get this book and get my hands on it, am I going to spend 10 years building my brand? Well, if I told you that it's attached to making a six-figure income or more, you're probably gonna say yes. However, you have to go back to this book to reference what the hustle actually looks like. So I think it's a great book. I think it's incredibly useful. It's very simplified. I think keeping things simple is important. If I had to decide between the very first book that he made called Crush It compared to Crushing It, which is his latest book, I, A, would choose the first one if you're looking to have, to follow a blueprint, to figure out what exactly happens when you build a brand. Because this book doesn't give you the specifics. It gives you the benefits behind the platforms. It gives you great stories, people who have made it happen. It doesn't quite give you what your blueprint looks like. So you may think, hey, in my head, should I go launch an apparel site? Well, this isn't gonna tell you if you should do it. The first book is going to tell you what you should do. It's your foundation, it's your blueprint. So if you're just starting out, you're brand new, get the first book, do not get this. If you're building a brand at scale and you're trying to figure out what platforms are changing and, and the stories of if you're on the right track after two, three, four, five years, get this one. It could work for you. A stretch goal. It's something that when you set that goal and when you make that intention, you are not capable of executing on that goal when you actually make it. For example, when I first launched District Media Press with my partner and I in my bedroom, we bought the domain, we made the website, we didn't have a clue how we would get to our $1.2 million within a 24 month period of time. But we made the goal to do it. We didn't know how we were gonna go from two people in one room who had little skills, but had an idea to eight, nine, 10, 13 people working for us. But we knew that it was a goal that we were gonna going to make and we made it, but we made it in a, in a position where it wasn't realistic. That's called a stretch goal. So what Elon did was he made a stretch goal. He said, listen, I'm gonna take this spacecraft and I'm gonna be 10 times fast, 10 times better. It's gonna open up doors that will have never been done before. It's a silly goal in his words. It is a, a, a crazy, absurd, too big goal, but I'm gonna go ahead and make the goal happen in a moment in time where it was not physically possible. Why do I bring up what just happened with SpaceX and the successful land and launch? It's simple, you guys. If your goal is unrealistic and you in your heart feels like you can't get it done, make that goal anyways, because if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. One idea, unrealistic, stretch goal, and it happened because he made the decision that it was actually possible. I wanna thank Lokasetja for letting us film here. I wanna thank you guys for watching, and as always guys, be bold, be great, and above all, be you. Peace.